Before I can show you where we are going, let me show you where we have been. A black history tour of Washington, D.C. is exciting, interesting, fact-filled, and fun. On the tour, we will go throughout the city, going to all four quadrants of the city. We will learn how slaves helped build some of the most important buildings in Washington, D.C. The African-American history of Washington, D.C. is often a history that is not easy to hear about, but a story we all need to know. Washington, D.C. is one of the first cities ever built specifically to be a capital of a country. One of the designers of the city was Benjamin Banneker, a free black man. Mr. Banneker had knowledge of farming and mathematics. He wrote 17 farmer almanacs, and at the age of 22, he made a working wooden clock that kept time for 30 years. His work was known in America as well as in Europe. Thomas Jefferson wrote Banneker a letter praising Mr. Banneker for his work. Mr. Banneker sent a copy of one of his almanacs to Thomas Jefferson, who at the time was Secretary of State. Jefferson then sent a copy of the almanac to the men of science in France. After reading the almanac, the scientists of France were impressed with Banneker's work. Banneker wrote a 12-page letter expressing to Thomas Jefferson that blacks in the United States possess equal intellectual capacity and mental capabilities as those whites who were described in the Declaration of Independence. Banneker also stated that blacks should also be afforded the same rights and opportunities afforded to whites. This began a long correspondence between the two men that would extend over several years. The letter that Banneker had written to Jefferson was published in various newspapers. Needless to say, the letter was not well received by the American public. Mr. Banneker died in 1806. No one can say for sure how many slaves and free black men worked on the Capitol. Records were not kept very well. Dr. William Thornton, the designer of the Capitol, was from the British West Indies, and he himself owned slaves. Dr. Thornton started the American Society for the Colonizing and the Free People of Color. In keeping with his commitment of freeing slaves, he proposed to allow 50 intelligent Negroes to earn a wage while working on the Capitol for six years. He asked the Board of Supervisors to purchase the enslaved men, then train them as stone cutters and free them after six years. The Board of Supervisors never took up his idea. To build the Capitol building, the government paid $6,000 for a 17-acre Allen sandstone quarry in Virginia. Getting the stone from the creek to the Capitol was very hard work. The quarry was on an island that was snake-infested and full of mosquitoes. The temperature reached 100 degrees. The work was very hard. The men had to cut stone without any proper tools, using mainly hand picks. From August 1st to September, the men were given a half pint of whiskey to help them through the tough, hot days. After the stone was cut, it was transported by oxen, then transferred to schooners. The schooners delivered the stone near the Capitol work site. There were at least 37 slaves the government rented to build the Capitol, the White House, and the city. Slaves did carpentry, masonry work, roofing, plastering, and painting. The laborers used simple machines and conventional tools. The men used two-man hand saws to cut lumber and clear the land. Pulleys were used to lift heavy equipment. Most of the men, free and enslaved, worked 12-hour days. Slave owners were paid $5 a week for each slave. A black man was paid a dollar a day. A free white man was paid a dollar 25 cents a day. Unskilled labor was paid $70 a year. And if a slave worked on all days, nights, and Sundays, the money was his.